chapter 2 and verse 15 I do want to welcome all of those that may be viewing on uh, uh, what are they viewing on Facebook Facebook that's it I don't have that so I don't it, Facebook um, so I do want to welcome you all that uh, may tune in for that and uh, we're looking at Second um, Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let's pray again. Father, again, we ask that thou wouldst be with us, open our minds and our hearts to receive thy word. In Jesus' name, amen. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Now, um, you know, as we get older, our memories tend to, our ability to memorize, I should say, tends to fade. Um, anybody having that problem besides me? Thank you. I'm glad I'm not alone. Um, because the older you get, it just seems harder to remember. I mean, somebody may ask me, you know, what did you have for lunch? And so help me if I know, you know. Um, it just it seems to progressively get worse. Uh, many times we might remember uh, verses of scripture that we memorized as children, and it just pops up in our head. You ever had that happen? Uh, think and, and a lot of times it happens when you need that verse for whatever reason it may be. It comes back to your memory. And uh, what is that, by the way? That's a fulfilling of Psalm 119, verse 9, right? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not, what? Sin against thee. So the Holy Spirit takes those verses that we memorized as a child or as a young adult or whenever it was, and at the, if, we don't, if we can't pull it up, if someone was to say, okay, quote to me Psalm 119.9, and if we couldn't pull it up in our mind, there may be times when we're in a situation or something and the, and the Holy Spirit of God does what? Pulls it up for us, right? And that's a good thing. Uh, and then, we, then after all of it's said and done, what do we do? We're kind of like, wow, where'd that come from? You know, I memorized that as a child. I just can't, I, wow. And uh, we ought to be amazed at that. And uh, so the Holy Spirit at specific times is able to, you ever witness to somebody and then, you're trying to remember remember a verse of scripture to give to them, and then it just kind of comes. That's the Holy Spirit, folks. That's the Holy Spirit bringing those things back to our memories, and that's a good thing. It's important that we hide God's word in our hearts. Now, now, although it may be difficult to remember things now, it does not relieve our responsibility to do our best in fulfilling 2 Timothy 2.15. So I say all of that because sometimes when we get older and we can't remember those things, we begin to use that as a crutch and an excuse to not try. To not try. Now, I've, you know, I've known people that could memorize passages of Scripture, paragraphs, you know, but I... I'm thinking as the older we get, if we're able to memorize a verse, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to memorize it, right? The important thing is what? Is try. Yeah, memorize it, to do it. But it's important, 2 Timothy 2.15 uh, says to study. So let me ask you a question right off here. How many of you, um, don't, don't raise your hand. I don't want to, don't raise your hand. Uh, how many of you read the Word of God? Okay. Just answer in your mind. And then let me ask you this question. Is reading the Word of God the same as studying the Word of God? Now, we're going to go through this and look at this a little bit so that we understand what that means when it says study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We're going to look at that verse, break it down a little bit, and then figure out if we're doing what this verse says. 
So the first thing that I want us to notice, and you have your hand out, is that there is the needed attention in the study of God's word. There is needed attention. So your blank there is a word attention. Uh, to study the word of God. Letter A, the definition of study. So this is very important. The definition of study. Now the word study that's used here in our text does not mean, and we need to understand, the word that is the word study in our text does not mean book learning. It does not mean book learning. Now we connect the word study with book learning because that's our school system. That's the way that we associate that word, book learning, uh, study. Teacher would say, hey, you need to study for a quiz or you need to study this portion of the book or you need to do that, you know, the word study. And we immediately think about book learning. And uh, that's not always uh, a fun thing. I mean, when I was in college, I took English a couple of times just because I wasn't that gifted at book learning. And, um, it, it, you know, is anybody else ever have a hard time? You, what, whatever grade you got, you, you worked for it. You know what I mean? Uh, there were some folks in class that they just, it's like, you know, nothing. You know, they just, I, when I was in uh, uh, Corinthians class, there was a girl that sat right over here beside me. And uh, come to find out, I mean, she was just, she just breezed through these tests and things. And, and I was like, what in the world? And we'll come to find out she was fluent in Greek and fluent in Hebrew. I'm talking about the Old Testament languages and the New Testament language, the ones that are not spoken, you know, and I'm like, so how in the world? And then I felt like, you know, I felt like about that small sitting beside her at that point. But, uh, but she, she did well. She didn't have to study much because she had already been through all of this. But the word study, let me tell you what it actually means. It doesn't mean book learning, but what it does mean, it means to be earnest, to be zealous, and this is your blank, to be dedicated in your action. So when the Bible says study, it's not saying book learning. It's saying to be dedicated, to be earnest, to be zealous in what you're doing. Okay? And we're going to talk a little more about that. Uh, the action uh, in this case is seeking God's approval. So if you look at the verse, study to show thyself what? Approved. So the word study is not saying grab all the knowledge, book learning that you can get. It's saying be diligent in your action in showing yourself approved to God. Okay? That's, that's completely different than what most of us think when we read the word study. It's not saying book learning is saying be dedicated. That's the word, dedicated. Now, what does that mean to us? That means that when I start something, I need to be dedicated to finish it. Um, anybody here play a musical instrument? All right, several. If you're going to play that instrument as well as you can, what do you have to do? You have to practice and you have to be what? Dedicated to practice in order to become proficient in that instrument, whatever it may be. That's the same thing that's talking here. Study. Be dedicated in our action in being approved by God. That's what he's saying. And so if I may take the liberty here, let me read it, read, read this verse, and change that word study to what I'm just talking about. So here, here's, if you do that, this is what it would sound like. Be earnest, zealous, and dedicated to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see, there's a big difference there, isn't it? Then what we think, the word study, you know, be studying to show yourself approved like we're going to have a test no be dedicated 
Be zealous. What is zealous? You ever heard of a zealot? Yeah. There are people who are, uh, you know, to be zealous is to be like someone who is a zealot who has a cause or a purpose, um, a mission, and that's what they're, that's their focus totally, you know. Um, but here's a, it says be zealous. What, think in your mind, don't answer out loud, but think in your mind, what are you zealous about? You know, well, the Bible tells us we ought to be dedicated and zealous, zealous about, about being approved by God and how we handle his word. And be earnest about it, all right? Uh, and then in letter B, the design of study. And it says, uh, it says here, approved unto God. Now, the first thing is to attain sanction. To attain sanction, that's approval. The word show, S-H-E-W, means to present. That's what that word means, to present. In this case, we are presenting ourselves for God's inspection on how we're handling his word. So I'm to study. I'm to be dedicated in my earnestness in God's word and how I, how I handle it. And then I am to show, I am to present myself to God for his approval in how I'm studying or handling God's word. Now, when was the last time you did that? You know, if we're going to study God's word, if we're going to be, if we're going to be the kind of Christian who is handling, rightly dividing the word of truth, we are presenting ourselves to God. We've got to be earnest about that and present ourselves to God in that action and saying, Lord, am I doing well? Presenting ourselves to God for that. The thrust of the verse is to be zealous in obtaining the approval of God. So, what it, that's, by the way, that's not legalism either. A lot of people like to immediately say, oh, I've been legalistic about stuff. That's not legalism at all. That's just showing or presenting ourselves to the Lord and asking, are we doing what we should be doing, how we should be doing it? All right? Now, you say, oh, boy, that's kind of, well, let me ask you a question. How many of you work at a place that there is a boss above you? Okay. Or had worked at a place. Um, were there things that you had to do or have to do that someone is going to be looking at to see how well you're doing them? Yeah. Yeah. If you were ever in the military, you know that's true. I don't even have to go in detail about that. But I had to, not too long ago, had to get a report and, and turn it, um, give it to my boss, who in turn gave it to the CEO. And he wanted to know uh, how much we're spending on certain areas and how much we're spending on paper and then ink and other things like that. So I had to do some research to go back a couple of years to find out what our cost was and what we were doing. And so, but I knew that it was going to be looked at and inspected. So did you think I made sure everything was correct? You better believe it. You better believe it. Well, folks, if we're going to handle God's word correctly, we have to remember that God's going to look at it and inspect it. Uh, and then secondly, to avoid shame. It says there, that needeth not to be ashamed. One thing I would hate <clears throat> is for my boss to look at it and send it back and say, what is this? With a frowny face kind of thing. You know, what in the world have you got here? When I was teaching in school, I would draw a smiley face. I don't think you can do all that now. You know, every, every, no matter what the kid gets, you got to draw a smiley face or something. I don't know, uh, but it's it's just weird. But uh, you can. Somebody told me the other day you can't even use a red pencil or a pen. Yeah, didn't didn't realize the color red was so uh, horrible. But um, 
where was I going with that? But anyway, we used to draw those smiley faces or frowny face if they didn't do a good job. Uh, and we didn't, we weren't trying to shame them, but, uh, you know, did want to, them to understand that, hey, this, you know, you need to pick it up a little bit uh, right here. Well, God's not trying to shame us, but God is looking to approve what we're doing. How earnest are we to get God's approval? Now think about this. We're earnest and dedicated in getting approval from people, right? I mean, ladies, you get all gussied up. That's the southern word we use. Get all gussied up. You're looking for your husband or someone to say that you look, look well, you know, that you look good, right? Now, come on. I know y'all ain't. Boy, we're going to have an altar call here pretty soon. Now, if you didn't, if you didn't care about how you looked, and men do the same thing, if we didn't care about how we looked, why, why even bother when we rolled out of bed, right? We just go on about our business. It didn't matter. Hair all disheveled and everything else. You know, I, I know somebody took a shovel on mine, but, you know, we just, we just wouldn't care. All right? But we want approval. Approval. And there's nothing wrong with getting approval. Um, and then uh, let me go to the next one. Analyze scripture. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth means to analyze the scripture. The words rightly divide means to rightly handle the word of God. Rightly handle the word of God. It literally means to cut straight or right. Cut it right. Explain it right. Uh, the analogy actually comes from a father who's cutting bread. Uh, now, when I was growing up, there was, there was basically four of us. There's five five of us, but I was older when my youngest sister was born. Um, but we'd sit at the table, and if my mom was cutting pie or cake, you know what I was doing? I was eyeballing. And if they got the, they got a bigger piece than I did. I protest. Okay? Now, don't look so pious. You did it too. Uh-huh. And, and maybe some of you still do it. I mean, I still do it. But, I, you know, they, they look, you know, you got a bigger piece. Well, that word rightly divide means to cut straight. It's like the illustration of a father who's cutting bread, and he's cutting those pieces exactly the same, cutting them correctly. You ever notice how you, your loaf of bread comes all the slices are exactly the same. I mean, disregard the two ends, but you know what I mean? Why? Because all the bread is going through a machine of wires that cuts that exactly the way every loaf is the same. And that's this word. Analyze the scripture. Divide it correctly. Handle it correctly. That's what it's saying. The Septuagint, the oldest Greek version of the Old Testament, it uses uh, is the use of making one's way. Um, Proverbs eleven five says, "The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness." Make your straight, make your way straight, rightly handle. Now, what is the what is the opposite of rightly handling, God, handling God's word? It's corrupting God's word. And boy, is that going on today or what? Now, the word workman here refers to a laborer who has been hired. Now, the laborer has to give diligence to the kind of work that he does and the kind of quality of the work that they're doing. And so he's going to be, he's going to be put before the tests there. And so that word laborer combined with rightly handling is like hiring someone to do a job with, uh, let's say if you hired somebody to do some yard work or whatever it was, you expect them to rightly handle whatever it is that you wanted them to do. The laborer is to rightly handle that. My mother and father left on, this is years and years ago, but they left on vacation, and they, they said, Greg, we want you to uh, 
handle the garden while we're gone. I'm like, handle? What? You want me to do what? Take care of the garden. Now, I am not a gardener. I'm not a farmer. I'm not a nothing when it comes to that. I don't even like to cut grass. I don't like to do any of that stuff. Uh, mainly because I had to when I was growing up. I didn't have a choice on that yard work stuff. But they said, we want you to take care of the garden. And I said, well, what do you mean? What does that mean? Well, we want you to get the weeds out of it and make sure there's no weeds growing in it when we get back and so that everything, just water it and all that kind of thing. I said, all right, I got this. So I should have asked what a weed was. But I went in there and tilled up the ground and tilled up everything else too. And they got back and here's a nice plowed up section of ground. And of course the plants were still there. They were laying everywhere, but they were still there. And of course that was useless. I didn't rightly handle the thing. I didn't handle it at all. It was horrible. Uh, I, I have since learned some things like designate that to someone else. Uh, now look at number two quickly with me. The necessary approach in the study the necessary approach in the study of God's word. First of all, we have to be begin with the right foundation. The right foundation is salvation. Salvation, that's number one. Salvation, listen, we can't handle God's word, rightly divide God's word or handle it correctly if we're not saved. It's just not going to happen. Why? 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21 says this, For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men of God, listen, spake as they were moved by what? The Holy Ghost. So who wrote this? God wrote it through what? Through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Men penned these things. It was the Holy Spirit. So if I'm going to rightly handle the Word of God, and if I'm going to be earnest and dedicated in that to present myself to God one day on how I handle God's word, I better be saved. <laughs> I mean, that just, that just makes sense, don't it? The Holy Spirit wrote it. I would think we'd want the Holy Spirit to help us with this. Um, so, uh, now, there's several things. Um, supplication is the next, the next one. And I want to get through, and supplication basically is the word prayer. And there's four prayers that, that we ought to be praying uh, as we study the Word of God. So turn with me to Psalm 119. And I just mentioned Psalm, or quoted a little verse from Psalm 119 uh, earlier. But Psalm 119, and there's... Four scriptures here in Psalm 119 that we're just going to uh, take a look at real quickly. One of the first things that we ought to pray as we study God's word, in other words, what I mean by that, I sit down at, at, at whatever time that I open my Bible to study the word of God. I ought to pray first. I ought to pray. And the first thing I ought to pray, uh, Psalm 119, verse 12. And it says this, Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. So when I get to my time and to my place of where I'm going to study God's word, I'm going to open it up, and in my mind I know that God is, I'm going to present myself to God for his approval on how I'm handling the word of God. I ought to be praying. That, by the way, does that, is, is that not a, um, I don't want to say scary or fearful thing, but isn't, isn't it some, something that's kind of awesome in its, what we're supposed to do? Just to, to give an account to God on how we study his word? You know, folks, what would you think if the pastor got up here and hadn't studied a lick and he just opened up the Bible and just kind of started willy-nilly about 
God's word. And I'm glad we don't have a pastor like that. He studies. He studies the word of God. He not only studies, he prays over it. Exactly what we're talking about. Supplication, praying over it. Lord, help me with this. Show me, teach me. You have the Holy Spirit, folks, dwelling within you. The Holy Spirit of God dwells within every Christian. And when you open up God's word, he's the one that wrote it. He's the one that's going to enlighten you. He's going to help you understand it. For instance, have you ever read across a passage before and, you know, you, you didn't really grab a hold of the thought and everything? And then maybe on a Sunday or Wednesday or something, someone uh, taught or preached on that same passage and, and then all of a sudden the light bulbs go on? Did that ever happen to anybody but me? Thank you. Y'all are quiet quiet tonight all right uh, yeah that's what are we saying lord teach me thy statutes help me to understand them i ought to be praying before i even open god's word lord teach me what it is that thou was having me to learn okay and then we should also pray in psalm 119 verse 18 look at verse 18 Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Have you ever prayed that, Lord? Open my, open my eyes. Now, what happens? We sit down to study sometimes the word of God. We've already worked all day long, right? Get to the end of the day after our favorite show came on and finished. Getting ready to go to bed, and you're like, mm, I, I, didn't, I didn't read the Bible. I didn't read the Bible. So I... Throw the Bible open, read a couple of verses, and I think I've done something. Have a place and a time set aside where you do read the Bible, to where you do study it. Ask the Lord, teach me thy statutes. Ask the Lord, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Help me to see what it is that thou wast have me to see. Right? So many times, what do we do? We just open up the Word. Okay, I'm going to do my devotions. I mean, we do that out of guilt. Because we Christians are supposed to read the Bible. And so we get to the end of the day, you know, I'm going to do my devotions, and we do that. We ought to be praying, Lord, open my eyes. Help me to see exactly what you would have me to learn today. And then help me to apply that to my heart and to my life. Now, as I continue on with the praying, look in Psalm 119, verse 36. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. What is he saying? He's saying, Lord, not only teach me, but help me to open my eyes, Lord, so that I can see exactly what you're trying to teach me, but also incline my heart. So what have we gone? Lord, teach me. That's a head knowledge. Lord, open my eyes. Heart knowledge. Down to the heart. Lord, incline my heart to learn thy statutes, to learn thy testimonies. If, if we don't ask the Lord to help us and incline our hearts to that, then you're wasting your time. Lord, incline my heart unto thy testimonies. What is he saying? Lord, give me a heart for your word. Give me a heart for your law. Give me a heart for your commandments. What did the Lord say when he was here on this earth? If you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. Listen, you can't keep commandments, and I can't keep commandments if I don't know what they are. Is that right or wrong? Thank you. I can't keep the speed. Have you ever gone down a road that you're not familiar with, and you're kind of wondering what the speed limit is? Now, I do. I do. Now, on our phones now, if it's GPS, it'll put the speed limit right on there for you. But I, I am, I'm just the opposite of the pastor, okay? I'm a stickler on the speed limit. And uh, sometimes I don't quite stick to it, I go a little bit under. But 
sometimes I'll get, I'll get on the road and I'll be like, what's the speed limit on this road? Now, by the way, the pastor said he's doing better, so I'm glad. I have, I, I've ridden with some folks where I really caught up on a lot of praying. Um, stickler, to what is the testimonies of God here? What are the laws? What are the things I'm supposed to know? And I've already prayed, Lord, open my eyes that I may see, right? Teach me that I may know what your commandment. Lord, what do you mean by abstaining from all appearance of evil? What do you mean by that? Right? I mean, we just read across that, huh, abstain from all appearance of evil. Right? Well, let me ask you this. What did the Lord mean by evil? What did the Lord mean by appearance? You ever thought about that? Or do we just, do we just say, okay, abstain from all appearance of evil, and we register in our mind what appearance is and what evil is, and we'll just stay away. Okay, evil is murder. I don't even want to look like I'm murdering somebody. <laughs> you know, I know that's a silly illustration, but when was the last time we asked the Lord, help me, incline my heart, teach me what that means, whatever, that, whatever it may be that you're studying. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. We, we quote that, we read it, right? Whatsoever things are what? True. Whatsoever things are what? Honest. Whatsoever things, all of these lists that we go through, right? Whatsoever things are of a good report. We go through that list. Okay, I'll do that. Uh huh. And then we don't think about that verse anymore until somebody else quotes it. And we don't even know what all that means. Incline my heart to understand what your testimony or what your scripture is saying. Folks, one day we will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and give an account, present ourselves for Him to give an account to us whether it's well done or not on how we dedicated ourselves or were earnest and zealous in knowing and inclining our hearts to the God's word. What does it mean? Now, let me continue on for the sake of time here. I've got to roll. And so then B, letter B. Did I give you all of it? No, I, I missed one. Uh, Psalm 119, 73 says, Give me understanding. That's what I was talking about, but I forgot to let you know what the word was. So supplication, teach, verse 12, open, verse 18, incline, verse 36, and give, verse 73. Give me understanding. That's a process. A lot of Christians think they can just sit down, open God's word, and just comprehend and understand all there is to know. That's not happening. If that was true, I could do that with math. But when I was in college, before we could graduate, we had to take math test. We had to do that with English, too. I ended up, my senior year, had to take what we called bonehead English because only boneheads took that English class again. I, I took enough English to minor in it, not because I didn't want, not because I wanted to. So I'm in this math class, taking this little test. I thought I did pretty good. Got the score back. Said you're on a sixth grade level math. I'm like, well, praise the Lord for that. Can a sixth grader balance a checkbook? I don't know. I said, the Lord will help me with this. And what he did, he gave me a wife that can do it. <laughs> Amen. Now, letter B, continue with the right, frame, uh, the right framework. That's B, continue with the right framework. First of all, context. Listen, when you're studying God's word, keep it into context. Get the context. Keep it in there. Look at it in the context you know how many times verses are pulled right out of context I mean so much so much 
keep it in the context. I told you about the guy um, uh, that I worked with one time, and we were talking about discipline, disciplining children. And he's, he's like, Greg, I, I, no, 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 Greg says, uh, the Bible says, spare the rod and spoil the child. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, what, what? I said, you, you got the right words, but they're twisted somehow or another. What in the world happened there? And uh, I said, yeah. I said, in the context, it's saying, if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. That's what you're trying to say. Uh, listen, don't just take verses out of their context. We do use verses to apply stuff. There's nothing wrong with that if it's in the right way, in the right context. But if you're taking a verse and just running with it without the context, you've missed a lot. You have missed a lot. And so the last thing there uh, on your sheet there, uh, we should also uh, use common sense. Well, that's, you know, that's a real brainer. Use common sense. We, we need to use common sense. When you begin to study God's word, don't check your brains at the door. Don't, you know what I mean? How many, you know, how many times do people sit down at the last of the day, they're tired, they, you know, and oh, I got I to gotta study God's word, but, but they're so foggy that they got nothing left. You know, now you might be great at doing it at the end of the day. I'm not saying that it's wrong to do it at the end. Don't misunderstand that. But me, I'm I'm a morning person, so I like to do it in the morning. Other people are not morning people at all. You know, none at all. But after they get going throughout the day and they get done with work and stuff, then they can sit down. You know, and they're they're still kind of sharp. Me, by the time I get home from work, I'm dull as I can be. I'm not sharp. And the older I get, I'm not even sharp in the morning. So, you know, I have to find that right time. It takes me a little bit of time now to get, to get myself in the right frame of mind. Study God's word. Listen, folks, the whole purpose that I'm trying to get to you tonight is it is important that you and I as Christians study the word of God. Don't just, don't just let it go. Don't just let it go. It's good to read God's word. But study God's word. Take a passage of scripture, study on it, and apply these things that we've been talking about tonight. I hope you'll do it. I hope, I hope you'll, if you, don't, if you haven't ever done it, I hope you'll stop and start doing it. Just take a little passage. You don't have to study a book. I, had a guy, I, had, I literally had a guy tell me we were going to, um, riding together to college over in Virginia Beach at the time. Literally told me, he says, oh, if I don't study 30 chapters a day, I'm, I'm sinning. I don't know. I'm like, well, pal, you, you know, you really set one up there for you. And he didn't make it. You know, he, he, didn't, he didn't make it. He set a goal so high he couldn't make it. And it's, don't set you a goal so high you can't attain it. Remember, that was one of the points, attain don't set your goal so high you can't attain it. Take a little passage and begin with that, okay? Well, I'm going to stop right there. We need to pray. I hope you'll, you'll do those things we talked about. Let's get together in uh, our groups and pray for, uh, for about 10 minutes, and then uh, Brother Chick will come up and close us in prayer, all right?